Hey guys, Pora here, and I'm back with another video, this time to again answer the age-old question, can it jungle? Now you may be asking, why are you doing it again? You did it last year! And while this is true, League of Legends has had multiple massive updates, as well as 26 patches since that video came out. Some of the junglers that were meta then are forgotten now, and some of the worst defenders before are now staple picks even in pro play. It's been one full year, and the tier list deserves an update, so welcome to the Can It Jungle Tier List Season 14 Edition. The last Canet Jungle video I did was a bit weird. It was actually just an afterthought at the time, a holdover video while I got footage from my Aurelian Soul Guide. I was not aware that this video would be the one to finally launch me into partner program eligibility on YouTube, and that it would still be, to this day, my most popular non-esports related video on the channel. Unfortunately, my inability to predict the popularity of the video meant that the actual structure and script of the video was a bit, shall we say, lacking. All right, and here's the tier list. It's got every champion up to Kasanti, I hope, so let's go right on ahead and start this off. Essentially, I just pulled up a tier list, put champions on it, talked about each one to the best of my knowledge for 30 seconds or so each, and called it a day. At the time, I had played maybe 75% of them in the jungle at some point, so I had a faint idea of how each champion would function, but I was by no means actually prepared to give a good tier list. This time is different. This is the tier list. So I'm gonna rebuild it real quick. Over the course of 15 hours on stream, follow my Twitch if you want to see more stuff like that, I performed a full jungle clear on every single applicable champion in the game while discussing the other nuances like playstyle, ganks, objectives, and so on. These clears were done on patch 14.3, so the times may be different if you're watching the video in the future. I also studied clears from jungle clear world record speedrunner Zenki and Grandmaster clear optimizer addict Shapeshift, and applied their tricks to my own clears to get a full grasp of the capabilities of each champion. Armed with much better knowledge and physical proof of concept for every champion's clear, I'm ready to deliver a much more accurate tier list for all of you off-meta enjoyers to troll with on the Rift. I plan to go over every champion to some extent, and unlike the last Canet Jungle tier list, I will not do any montages where I skip over chunks of champions to save time. And with that, let's get this tier list underway. The tier list is split into 7 tiers, Z through F. Z tier means I think the pick has the ability to reshape the meta if it catches on, and S tier means I think the pick can function properly in the current meta. A tier is comprised of picks that are pickable in the meta, but not super amazing, and B tier are picks that can potentially function properly if picked, but will run into struggles. Anything below B tier is getting into dodge territory. And of course, just like last time, we have the Nobody Cares tier, consisting of all the junglers currently perceived as meta by the community. I also prepared graphics for each of the champions, which has a variety of useful ratings, such as jungle clear speed, or how well they can manage objective situations, but it's important to note that these graphics are not all-inclusive and are missing a few categories like invades and skirmishes that I'll talk about more in depth when I go over each individual champion. I'll be going through all the champions in alphabetical order, so let's start it off with Aatrox. Aatrox is fairly straightforward to start with, as he has a solid first clear clocking in around 325, decent ganks with EQ knockups and W, and modest clear speed as the game progresses. Aatrox does have some extra benefits while jungling, such as his passive granting full healing on monsters. This means Aatrox can usually handle invades and object as well since he's always topped off. While he is gated by a slightly slower clear than the average jungler, his great scaling and teamfighting ability allows him to start off our tier strong at S tier. Ari is next, and her clear is right around a 335. This is a good time to mention that I rate jungle clears a 2 out of 5 if you can't finish before Scuttlecrab, and a 3 if you can. 1, 4, and 5 are reserved for some of the outliers. Ari's clear doesn't get much faster than her initial clear, but you can usually forego camps due to her decent gank setup with E-charms and dashes once you hit level 6. Ari has other issues though, such as her not being able to properly set up on objectives. A traditional Ari would be looking for flanks, but jungle Ari has to sit there on the objective, meaning no surprise element to her engage. Ari gets placed in C tier. For those who recall, I gave Akali her own designated tier in the last video to showcase just how bad she is at jungling. Her clear was slow and unhealthy, and some of her abilities felt completely useless against camps. Q cost is way too high early, W would actively screw up camp patients, and she lacked any real ganking tools. While some of this is still true, I must owe Akali an apology. Due to the jungle pet healing changes, and me just becoming better at clearing overall, it turns out Akali's clear, while still somewhat unhealthy, can be completed right around 3.30. She still has no ganks, terrible scaling to the jungle, and can't handle invades though, which puts her at D tier. Unlike Akali, Akshan has awful clear speed. His Q does reduce damage to monsters, and can't even kill mini Krugs. 
He also has a 2-hit passive that forces him to stand still to maximize camp damage, meaning his first couple clears are not healthy at all. However, there are two ways that Akshan jungle can be good. Firstly, the infinite swing bug on his E can actually push his initial clear speed up from the 345 range all the way to a sub 330. However, this is technically a bug and might be patched out at any time. The second way is through his ganks, which are actually quite insane. Akshan not only has semi-global pressure through his ultimate, but has essentially permanent stealth that he can use to sneak up on any laner. Lane Akshan will usually be pinged missing if he disappears to gank, but jungle Akshan is obviously different because he's always missing from minute 1. Akshan is a B-tier jungler. Alistar is completely misunderstood as a jungler. People think his ganks are good, but they kind of aren't. Don't get me wrong, the ganks are decent. However, the range on Alistar's WQ is way shorter than people think it is. On top of that, the clear is horrendous. All of Alistar's abilities are on a cooldown longer than 10 seconds, making Ali one of the slowest junglers in the game. Luckily, Alistar is a relatively low resource champion to begin with, so this isn't a terrible setback. Alistar lands at C tier. Anivia's first clear is slow and unhealthy. It's also incredibly predictable because she's almost required to start blue buff. This means you'll spend much of your early game being invaded and outpaced. However, your ganks are decent with the long range Q stun and wall, and your clear speed and objective speed get significantly better once you hit level 6. Anivia is also a C tier jungler. I'll also mention that the picks on this tier list are all in exact order from best to worst. Annie's clear is also slow, around a 340 to 350 full clear. Her abilities also burn a lot of mana early, meaning you're prone to being invaded. However, Annie has a special tool known as the ranged point and click CC, which essentially means she gets to move up a tier by default. Stuff like ranged point and click CC or global and semi global abilities are a great way for a jungler to gain more value. Tibbers also helps Annie do objectives later in the game. Overall, Annie barely scrapes into B tier. Aphelios is probably the first champion on this list that will surprise people. On paper, nobody should expect Aphelios to be that great. He's a marksman with a lot of kit nuances that probably slow down his clear, right? However, it turns out Aphelios' jungle clear actually lines up perfectly. You can burn through Calibrum and Severum on just Red and Krugs, meaning you'll have Infernum for Raptors and Wolves, and you can burn through that to get Crescendum for Blue and Gromp. Aphelios clear usually clocked in at just around 330, meaning a decent leash can get you to scuttle on time. The clear does screw up your gun rotation a little bit, but not enough to actually be in a way that matters. The guns are super easy to fix on your second clear, and by then you'll have a fast enough base clear that gun management won't matter. On top of this, Aphelios is great at dealing with invades. This is somewhat of a little known fact, but Aphelios is actually really good at 1v1s, so fighting your way out of an invade can work more times than expected. Ganks can be good as well since Gravitum is a point and click root, and Gravitum autos are all slows. When it comes to objectives, Aphelios can melt them all with Crescendum. I find that the best way to maximize DPS on these tanky camps as fast as possible is to pop Severum Q to generate 4 Chakrams, which you can use to basically one-shot any objective in the blink of an eye. Overall, Aphelios is definitely a surprisingly good jungler who happens to have the stars aligned to make the pick function. I'm putting Aphelios in A tier. Ash is another marksman with good value in the jungle. Her first clear is roughly a 330, and she has strong global pressure from her E and R. She can also gank well due to all of her auto attacks being slows. Where Ash suffers a bit though is that she isn't nearly as good at 1v1s early as Aphelios is, meaning she is prone to invades and has a harder time setting up objectives. Ash gets a B tier. Aurelian Soul Jungle is unique for his scaling. Technically, you can stack faster through jungle than lane even after the nerfs. If left alone, Aesol should expect to get between 12 to 15 stacks a minute, much higher than the expected 10 a minute from lane Aesol. That is, if you're left alone, which you likely won't be. Since Aesol is prioritizing stacking from camps over clear speed, his clear can be slow at times early. Enemy junglers can take advantage of this and gain tempo leads. If this doesn't happen though, you're left with an Aesol with more stacks than usual. Aesol also has the ability to take objectives extremely quickly with Q, and he can gank effectively due to his W range. Aesol goes in B tier. Azir has arguably the worst jungle conditions in the entire game. His W is literally just an auto attack. It doesn't get more damage until you have more AP, so level 1, it is just an auto attack. In fact, it's worse than an auto attack for jungling since it can screw with your cutting. His E doesn't help with the clear either as it deals no damage. His Q can have scuffed AoE hitboxes as well. All in all, it's one of the most uncomfortable and slow clears in the game. The cherry on top though is that Azir is a champion that depends on high resources. With the slow, unhealthy clear that Azir has, you will never be able to get gold. Your ganks don't even really exist until level 6, but the game is likely over before you get there. Azir is F tier. Bard has one of the slowest clears in the game, sitting at about a 350 if you double point Q and take E. This means that you have no W for healing though, meaning you can likely be invaded. You could always take W level 2 and be full health forever, but then your clear is slower than 4 minutes. Bard doesn't need to clear though, as he can permanently roam around collecting chimes and ganking lanes. His ultimate also gives global pressure, which is always a good thing to have. Bard is going into B tier. After they removed his monster damage, Blitzcrank jungle essentially died on the spot. 
Gone are the days of S tier Blitz Jungle, and now we're back to the slow 4 minute clear with zero objective pressure. He still has hook though, meaning cheese ganking the same lane 10 times in 5 minutes is still on the table. Blitz gets C tier for the cheese gank alone. Unfortunately, most Braum jungle players, what little there are, opt for lethal tempo and attack speed builds. This is terrible bait, as Braum's clear is too slow to warrant a high resource build. If you stick to normal supportive Braum though, you're dealing with a modest 350 clear speed, decent ganks, and surprisingly not terrible objective setup due to how difficult it can be to walk into a Braum. Still not good though, as your tempo is extremely slow overall. Braum goes into D tier. Caitlyn is another strong marksman jungler. Most of the camps have bushes right next to it, meaning Caitlyn can rotate headshots quickly for a solid 325 clear time. She can also be difficult to invade due to her traps and her E. I said last year that Caitlyn jungle would be playable if she could trap jungle camps, but thank god you can't because she would instantly become broken if this was the case. Caitlyn's ganks aren't too amazing at first, but quickly become deadly once she hits level 6, as her ult is a semi-global high damage assassination tool. Every enemy has to be weary once she has ult. Caitlyn is also great with objective setups. Walking into traps can be incredibly annoying to deal with, so getting to the objective first puts Caitlyn in a super powerful position. Caitlyn also scales very well overall, and her fast clear only helps to facilitate that. Caitlyn is A tier. To many, Camille Jungle died long ago. It's still not the worst in the world though, as her clear sits at just above a 330, and she still has options for ganking with her E. Unfortunately, this is where the perks of Camille Jungle end though, as she doesn't get enough resources from the jungle to ever be a threat to backline, which is kind of her entire purpose past 10 minutes. I have Camille in C tier. Cassiopeia is all about mana management. Her clear can be extremely fast if you have the mana, but you can also burn through it all in the blink of an eye, even through blue buff. Rotating your Q and E properly can see a 320 clear time, but it's easier said than done. Cassio's ganks are notable due to her W pool having decent range, and her R can provide a slow even if it misses. She can also sit at objectives, since her E heals her enough later to permanently tank it assuming you have the mana. The pick isn't infallible though, as enemies can take advantage of her mana issues to invade or outtempo her. Cassiopeia goes into B tier. Jogath actually has seen jungle usage here and there throughout the years, and he was never given any big jungle specific nerfs, so Jogath jungle is still definitely alive and kicking. His clear is super fast due to his E, and super healthy due to his passive, so a full health 320 is not uncommon. His ganks can be strong with Q and W, and it's impossible to win a smite fight against Jogath with his feast plus smite combo. Jogath will also likely see plenty of stacks in the jungle since using his ultimate on every objective can mean big health. Jogath is a pretty easy S tier. Quirky clears a little faster than 330, which is a good start. That's about all he has though. He has zero setup for ganks other than using W to gap close, and the W is a long enough cooldown that it can be taken advantage of during invades. You would also think Quirky Package would be strong at objectives, but it becomes significantly less useful when you realize Jungle Quirky has to sit on the objective at some point to begin with, and can't exactly spare the time to look for crazy package angles. Quirky gets C tier purely for clear speed and scaling alone, despite all the other downsides. Most people are familiar with how fast Darius clear is, with his first clear finishing right around the 3 minute mark, and his clear never gets slower from there. It gets to the point where you can combo camp, run to the next one, and the last camp will die to bleed from like 800 health. With this, you can play super aggressive and go for invades and ganks on timers that people aren't used to. Ganks are mostly just running at someone and trying to stat check them, but due to your W and E, it usually works out. Objectives are also very fast due to the bleed procs. Darius does have a bit of a scaling issue though, since levels tend to come slower through jungle, and the level 16 Darius power spike can be hard to get to. Despite Darius checking off all the boxes, he sits at S tier. Dr. Mundo is another jungler with an equally fast first clear as Darius, with first clears coming in easily under 310 due to how much damage Cleaver does early. Unlike Darius though, the clear speed doesn't get much faster since Mundo is usually building tank items. Cleaver allows you to take objectives quickly and the slow can be annoying to deal with, but he runs into similar scaling issues and can quickly become irrelevant if he falls behind. Mundo also gets into S tier, but only barely. Draven is one of the more difficult marksman junglers to pull off, but not because he's weak. Catching every axe can net you a clear around 320, but missing even a couple can make you late for scuttle. I miss an axe, I miss another axe! Oh my god. Draven player, by the way. Bruh! Okay. The raptors hate me, it's fine. Draven's ganks can be underwhelming, but that isn't a problem when Draven is mainly stacking up his passive on camps, and then getting that high damage level 6 global ultimate snipe. That's about all he offers though, which places him in B tier. Ezreal is another champion who used to be able to jungle, but was eventually shifted out of the role. For Ezreal, a big part of it is that his W does nothing to jungle monsters, meaning he's simply down in ability. However, Ezreal's Q and passive are still enough DPS that he can get a 320 first clear, and his ganks can be incredibly annoying since they usually consist of just going to a lane with Pryo and harassing the enemy with Q spam under turret. Ezreal also has global pressure with his R, so enemies have to be constantly aware of that. Unfortunately, Ez doesn't have the healthiest clear, so he can be invaded and forced off his camps easily, putting Ezreal in B tier. 
Fiora unfortunately gets out to a rough start in the jungle with a clear time of around 340, but the clear does get a bit faster as items start to come through. A lot of Fiora's value comes from side laning though, which is significantly harder to do while jungling. She also has a tough time finding meaningful ganks, landing her in C tier. Fizz is pretty mediocre all around. His clear is slow at over 340, and his ganks can be useless until level 6. Fizz will also never really get a lot of gold out of jungle since his clear never gets faster, and it's difficult for him to snowball as a result of this. His R can still be a powerful disrupting tool later on though, so Fizz gets to scrape into D tier. When I originally made the Galio jungle guide a year and a half ago, I said that Galio was all ganks and no clear. That was back in Season 12 when there was no jungle pet and healing was only based on Omnivamp. The times have changed, and Galio now has a very good clear time sitting at 325, and he remains relatively healthy while doing it. His ganks are also still just as deadly as they've ever been, and he's got global pressure to boot. So imagine that they're just like here or something, okay? You walk into the lane, now they see you, you E in, you're here, and then your W covers the entire fucking lane. Do you see how big the W radius is? Like, look, if I stand here, my W covers the entire lane. Like, you can't get out. Like, the, the ganks are actually undodgeable. Galio is comfortably in A tier. Gangplank jungle is definitely interesting, with a lot of rotating barrels and trial by fire to clear camps. His passive still works on jungle monsters, albeit a little slower than what you get in lane, and his first clear can be a bit slow, but his clear gets faster as you get more components, and his ultimate provides nice global pressure. Gangplank gets B tier. Garen is a jungler with a fairly solid clear at around the 315 range, and fairly good scaling that will allow you to stay relevant all game. The ganks leave much to be desired, but this is replaced with powerful invades that you can use to gain tempo leads over the opposing jungler. Depending on what kinds of champions are strong in the other roles, Garen jungle has clear value that allows him to be S tier. Nar is unfortunately not as good as his kit would make him seem. While his W does a lot of camp damage, the first clear sits right around 330, and his ganks aren't very impressive. Nar also suffers from the objective teamfight problem, where he has to sit on the objective since he's the jungler, but that makes his big engage very predictable and visible. Nar gets B tier. Gwangul is incredibly powerful. She at one point defined the entire meta for jungle, being the strongest power farming jungler in the game for a while until she got tagged with some early game nerfs that made it harder for her to sustain the camps. That is, until it was found out that you can just go fleet footwork and have the same sustain as always. While fleet does hit her damage a bit in the mid to late game, it never matters anyway since her damage is off the charts regardless of what room you go. If anything, fleet in the jungle is actually even better for her, since it helps her run down enemies that she's chasing. The one flaw to Gwen jungle is that her ganks aren't good before level 6, but you're never ganking anyway since she's got crazy fast clear and amazing scaling. Gwen is our first Z tier jungler. Heimerdinger can be awkward to pilot in the jungle since you'll have to get used to unique turret placements, and his ganks aren't amazing since you essentially only have the E stun, but where Heimer really shines is objectives. Early game, he can tank for his turrets and take objectives quickly. You can also use the turrets to zone off enemies that are trying to walk in. Later in the game is where shit gets crazy. Heimerdinger can solo Baron at 20 minutes with 2 items and ultimate. As long as you aren't tanking the Baron yourself and therefore dealing half damage, Heimer's 4 turrets will literally just kill Baron alone. The objective benefits for Heimer push him up to A tier. Huey can be forced off of his camps easily, and his clear isn't that fast to begin with, sitting at around a 340, but Huey technically has invisible pressure due to his QW, decent objective setup with EW and QE, and decent ganks with EE and EQ. The pick can be difficult to pilot, but you can definitely pull it off. Huey is B tier. Alawi jungle actually has some crazy tech with tentacle placement. If you set up all your tentacles correctly, you'll have as many as three of them hitting camps, some of which can reach multiple camps at once. If executed perfectly, Alawi can clear as fast as a 3 minute to 305. Realistically, you'll end up with somewhere around a 320. Since tentacles place themselves at set locations, this clear speed stays fast for the entire duration of the game. Alawi is also great at objective setups, since the thing she wants most is for people to walk into her. If she's sitting on the objective and the enemy team has to play into her E and R, it's a great fight in the making. Alawi's big downside is that her ganks are lacking. She has no setup at all, so ganking is usually incredibly situational. She also does fall off a bit, so you have to take advantage of her strong mid game. Alawi goes into A tier. Luckily for Aurelia, large monsters reset her passive. If they didn't, Aurelia might be one of the worst jungle clearing champs in the game. Since she does get to keep her attack speed though, her clear sits right around a 330. Her ganks can also be deceptively effective, as she can place her E in fog, Q onto a minion, and then surprise the enemy with her other E for the stun. Ganks get even easier once she hits level 6. Aurelia's passive maintaining itself on jungle monsters also helps her with invades, skirmishes, and objectives, since you basically always have to fight a 4 stack Aurelia at all times. All of this gets Aurelia to B tier. Janna is essentially Bard Part 2, with a clear around 350 and a focus mostly on roaming and ganking. Bard is a bit better at it since he has global pressure and XP from chimes, 
But Janna was a premier roaming top laner for a reason, so she can do the same strategies as Bard. Janna is also stronger on objective setups since her ultimate is a great way to guarantee smite secures in a 50-50. Most low resource champions like this can find mild success in jungle, and Janna is one of the better ones which places her in B tier. Jace has one of the more mechanically difficult clears to pull off, but doing so nets you a 315 clear. Some of the tips that can help speed up the clear include starting W level 1, warding Krug so you can hammer Q over the wall, and making sure you know his cooldowns well enough to rotate between forms optimally. The ganks are much more simple, mostly starting with an EQ, followed by jumping on them with hammer and hoping they die. Jace has some great scaling overall due to how versatile his kit is, and he's also very good at 1v1s and skirmishes in the jungle. Due to how solid he is across the board, Jace is an A tier jungler. I put Jin in D tier on my last tier list mainly because the channel is known for being chronic Jin haters and I wanted to piss all the Jin players off, but the reality is that he's much better than that. His W and R are super long range and therefore useful for global pressure and ganks, and he can set up well around objectives due to his traps. Pair that with a sub 331st clear and you've got yourself a B tier marksman jungler. Jinx is another marksman who can power through the jungle quickly. Rotating properly between Pow Pow and Fishbones can easily get you a sub 330 clear, and she's got traps to help her avoid invades if necessary. The ganks are kind of just Jin, but worse, but Jinx has the better ultimate due to it being a true global. Jinx is also B tier. Cassante is one of the most consistent clears in the game since it's essentially just rotating Q and auto over and over again. The clear is a sub 330, but you do need to worry about invades early due to Cassante being on the weaker side until he hits level 6. The ganks aren't too great due to a general lack of mobility without R, which you would need to be on top of the enemy to use anyway, and kidnapping the enemy jungler on an objective is unsurprisingly much less effective when you are also the one with smite. The consistent clear and overall usefulness of the champion are enough to bring Cassante up to B tier though. Kaiza is yet another marksman jungler with a sub 330 clear speed and global pressure with her W and R. Her ult especially can be a great way to generate numbers in a lane seemingly out of nowhere. Kaiza also has some really good scaling regardless of which build you choose to go. The main drawback is that unlike Jin and Jinx, Kaiza lacks any tools to survive a good invade, but her other uses still keep her in B tier. Kalista is a marksman who definitely does not have a fast clear. You would think the rend would be helpful, but really what ends up happening is that you're jumping around to kite the camp, which actively lowers your attack speed, making you clear slower. Her ganks are also not good at all, and her ultimate ends up only being useful for one of the three lanes early game. The only benefit to Kalista jungle is that you can't outsmite her due to rend plus smite, but that's grasping at straws. Kalista is a D tier pick. Karma has an incredibly slow first clear at around 350. She can easily be outpaced in the jungle. However, she is very good at dealing with invades. Not only is she fantastic at 1v1s, as is apparent through how she could dominate top lane, but she also never runs into health issues, since her mantra W can heal her off of camps. Karma is also technically an enchanter, meaning she does not require high resources to begin with. Despite the slow clear speed, Karma makes her way into B tier. Kassadin has one goal when jungling, and that's to power farm to levels 11 and 16. This was actually much easier in prior seasons, but nowadays the camps have more health and grant less XP overall. This makes it harder for power farming junglers to reach high levels in most games. If you're allowed to power farm permanently though, you can still achieve level 16 around the 25 minute mark, so the pick isn't dead. Slightly slow clear speed, and not the healthiest clear keep casting in V tier though. Katarina is essentially just fizz but worse. Her clear is slow, around a 345, and it's not healthy at all, which means she could be forced off of camps easily. Unlike Fizz though, Katarina doesn't even have a CC ultimate to be useful later, so she's essentially just a low resource damage champion. This is a fairly horrible recipe, and you won't find success unless you can somehow snowball after level 6. Katarina is a D tier jungler. Kale is casted in 2.0 with the same goal of power farming to levels 11 and 16. Kale is slightly better at it though, with W to heal her and some better kiting tools to deal with invades. Her clear is also faster if you can maintain passive attack speed stacks, and a 330 first clear is more than doable. Kale also has more uses than Cassidy when behind, as her ultimate will always be a powerful teamfighting tool. Kale goes right above Cassidy at B tier. Kennen has a slow clear, a bit slower than 340, and his ganks are incredibly situational. The only real way you can reliably set up a gank is to get your W passive auto ready, then land a QW auto to stun. Other than that, your ganks are pretty pathetic before level 6. They get better at level 6, but then you run into the objective problem where Kennen's engage becomes much less effective because he needs to sit on the objective where the enemy team can see him. Having decent CC allows him to stay in C tier though. Kled jungle was horrible in Season 13. You would dismount on your second camp no matter what, and dismounted Kled had terrible clear speed. With new pet healing and fleet footwork though, Kled can now stay mounted for the entire clear. His clear is still no faster than the 330 to 340 range, but at least he has more tools against invades and a faster base clear. He also has global pressure with his ultimate and plenty of mobility and CC to make ganks worthwhile. Kled makes it to C tier. Kog'Maw has a shockingly fast clear due to his W, and his first clear is sub 320. The clear also only gets faster due to the items that Kog likes to build, 
and objectives can be melted with ease. However, Cog has very little ways to gank since he has zero mobility, and he has no self-feeling tools apart from his E, which means he can be taken advantage of by enemy junglers. Cog ganks do get better at level 6 though, where he can play like Ezreal and go for pot shots under turret. Cogma lands in C tier. LeBlanc is one of the slower clears in the game at a 350, but she has good enough base damage and mobility that she can usually ward off invades if you're healthy enough when it happens. LeBlanc has no base sustain, so this can be an issue. Ganks are fairly solid though, with W for mobility and E for CC. The CC chains can get quite long too once you hit level 6. This isn't enough to salvage the slow and unhealthy clear though, so LeBlanc is bottom of C tier. Leona also has one of the slower clears, also around a 350, but unlike LeBlanc, Leona's Q stun is enough to keep her healthy while clearing. Leona's ganks can also be quite deadly due to CC chains, long range ones when she is level 6. Leona is still prone to being outpaced and invaded though, and she has little value at objectives, so she's also a C tier jungler. Lissandra's clear is a bit faster, around 335, and her ganks are also significantly better. Using E to gap close or to appear in the lane is a great way to surprise enemies, and her W is basically point and click CC. Her Q is also a slow, making for some extra setup if needed. Once you hit level 6, the options open up even more. Dives and ganks are better, and objective setup is a breeze with Lissandra R self-cast. All of these allow Lissandra to make it up to B tier. Lucian is not one of the marksmen with a fast first clear, and you won't be able to finish before scuttle. Lucian may have some kiting tools with E, but it's his only way to kite which means invades can throw Lucian off easily. Lucian's clear speed does get a little faster once you hit level 3 and have access to all your abilities for your passive, and your objective setups aren't horrible with R poke, but that's about all Lucian can offer, keeping him in C tier. Lulu starts off unassuming with a 340 first clear, but don't let this deceive you. Of all the enchanters in the game not named Ivern, Lulu has by far the best kit for jungling. So there's two ways that you can do this clear. Um, you can start Q, and it'll be a little bit faster, or you can start E, and you'll uh, have a little bit more health. She has not one, but four abilities she can use for self-peel. This means Lulu is relatively safe at all times when clearing both hers and enemy jungles. Lulu also has some amazing gank tools, as her Q is a 2 second 80% slow, her W is a point and click polymorph, and she even has another knockup and slow with her ult. All of this also means she's amazing at dives. Start the dive with poly, drop damage, tank up turret with R and E, and it's free. Lulu can also set up objectives well since later in the game she can easily tank up the objectives for a long time, and it can be difficult to walk into a Lulu team. Lulu's clear also isn't bad at all, and she's low resource to begin with, so you'll end up with multiple items you can play with. The pick is very strong and should be respected. Lulu is an S-tier jungler. Lux has a faster clear than one might expect, at around 335. Rotating spells with autos is enough to get a decent clear going. Lux also has self-peel with all three basic abilities, making for a healthy clear. Her ganks are solid too, featuring long range slows and roots, and she even has semi-global pressure with her R later on. The only issues with Lux are that she is immobile, meaning she is easy to get on top of and run down during invades or objectives. Lux is B tier. Malphite is an all-around strong jungle pick. He can clear with a sub 320, and he then likes to power farm to 6. With ult, Malphite ganks go insanely hard, and his objective setups are good as well since it's difficult to walk into the ult. His Q also makes him impossible to kill in the jungle, although the E attack speed slow is likely enough for you to just fight back anyway. Other than being underwhelming levels 1 through 5, Malphite really has no jungle downsides and then can an S tier placement. Malzahar has issues early with the 340 full clear and mana problems. Once you have a few points in your abilities though, clearing becomes easier with refreshing the damage over time. Malz also comes with point and click CC useful for ganks and objectives, and a passive shield that can help him survive invades. The pick isn't great, but it's low B tier. While Milio has one of the slowest first clears in the game at 4 minutes, Milio isn't necessarily a champion who needs resources to begin with. His clear is healthy, if nothing else, due to his E and W, and he can't be killed by the enemy jungler due to all of his abilities being great survivability tools. That said, his ganks, objective setup, and overall pace are on the worst end, so Milio is C tier. Misfortune is one of the less useful marksman junglers. Her ult and E can be good for ganks and dives, but her slow 340 clear speed and limited self healing tools cause her to fall behind easily. Misfortune is C tier. Mordekaiser is another jungler who people used to view as meta. He has a sub 310 clear that he can use to power through the jungle as long as you keep your passive active, and he's strong in 1v1s and skirmishes. Mordekaiser has decent ganks with his E and passive movement speed, and they become much better once he has R. Later in the game, his ultimate can be a helpful tool to zone the enemy jungler away from objectives, although it'll also prevent you from sweating the objective as well, so be careful about that. Mordekaiser is an S tier jungler. Morgana's history as a jungler is incredibly funny to look at. Riot gave her jungle buffs to make her W do 150% damage to jungle monsters. Everyone saw this and thought Morg jungle was strong, and it even showed up in pro play occasionally. Then, a year later, the ratio on W went to 200%, 
and Morg instantly became the strongest jungler in the game. They nerfed it to 180%, but she was still pick Ravana MSI 2021, so they nerfed it again to 155% and the pick essentially died overnight. Except 155% is literally just higher than the initial 150% that she had that made everyone think she was strong to begin with. People in the league community value the simple act of buffing and nerfing a champ so highly that they forget how strong a pick was with prior numbers. Nowadays, it's even higher at 165%, but people still don't play her. As for why you should pick her, she obviously has crazy clear speed and is always full health due to her passive. She can deal with early invades easily with Q and E, and her ganks are great too. Morg can walk into a lane, shield herself from CC, then press R and get a point and click stun that she can then layer the root on after. It's an incredibly strong gank. Morg can also sit on the objectives for a very long time since her W heals her for her entire health bar and it's always up because of the refresh mechanic. Morg also has some great teamfighting once you have Zhonya's, and the extra damage she gets from the higher economy can lead to shockingly high kill pressure. Morgana is a Z tier jungler, and people need to realize that she's just actively stronger now than she was back when she first gained popularity. Nefiri is pretty stable all around. She has a first clear around 330, but managing the dogs while kiting can be a hassle that will slow you down. When it comes to ganks, Nefiri has one of the easiest setups in the game, since she can press her long range W to tether to an enemy and dash onto them right away. She doesn't have any CC of her own for these ganks, but the damage and gap close are usually enough to kill or get summoners. Nefiri can also be strong at early game skirmishes and invades, which allows her to make it to A tier. As much as I like to complain about Nami as a champion, I can admit that she isn't a good jungler at all. A 350 clear is on the slower side, and her clear speed never improves. Nami is also notoriously bad at engaging, as her ultimate is pretty slow, and is usually much better for disengaging. That said, ganks are still doable since she can speed herself up and then try to bubble the enemy. Overall, Nami is one of the worst junglers in the game and is a low C tier. There are two ways you can play Nasus jungle. The first way is to just clear normally. If you do this, you have a clear between 330 and 340, which is slow but not terrible. Subsequent clears get faster as you get more stacks. Nasus ganks are fairly effective due to how powerful Wither can be, and his objective taking is also super fast once you have level 6 due to the reduced Q cooldown when the ult is active. The other way to play Nasus jungle is to literally just sit there on every camp and last hit everything with Q. This is incredibly funny, as you'll end up with about 1000 stacks at 30 minutes if you're left uncontested, which is essentially double what lane Nasus gets. If you do this though, you're incredibly prone to invades since you'll have a super slow tempo and a lower level. Either way can be fun, and Nasus is an A tier pick. Nautilus was meta for a short while when he got his jungle buffs, but he was tagged a bit and has since been dropped by most people. His first clear just barely makes it to Scuttle on time, and his ganks are obviously very strong due to his CC chains. He also scales well into the mid and late game due to his point and click ultimate, and he gets quite tanky with the extra items he can obtain from jungle. Nautilus doesn't go any higher than A tier though, due to his clear not getting much faster as you go later into the game. Nika was briefly extremely popular as a jungler right when she got her buffs. A sub 3 minute clear and being able to transform into camps and minions was enough for people to give her a chance. However, she quickly returned to the mid lane despite a few extra jungle buffs here and there, and her jungle play rate is extremely low again. That doesn't stop her from still being strong as a jungler though, as her aforementioned fast clear speed paired with her unique ganks and strong teamfighting keep her in S tier. Neela jungle actually got better with the season 14 changes, due to how the pet healing works. Since Neela can already block a good chunk of monster damage with her W, she can remain full health for a lot of her first few clears, and then you get lifesteal that allows you to never worry about health ever again. Neela can't be forced off of her camps via invade, but she usually won't die as long as you keep an E charge. I won't say much else, I have a Neela jungle guide if you want to learn more. She's A tier. I also have an Orianna jungle guide, but unlike Neela, Orianna has gotten a bit worse with the changes. Most of her jungle sustain came from Omnivamp, so having pet healing and tankier camps just means her clears slow down and is less healthy. She can still finish her first clear around 340, and her subsequent clears are very fast. If you want to know more, just watch the Ori jungle video. Ori gets dropped to B tier though. Orange jungle is another super strong pick. The average orange jungle game will look like this. You full clear in 320, look at what damage type the enemy jungler is, and then literally just buy components to match and show up to the scuttle fight with items. Orn can do other cool item stuff like have bomby cinders for grub spawn, or finish first items super quickly with futures market, and he's always outpacing the enemy due to his fast clear and ability to stay on the map without resetting. I have an Orn jungle guide, check that out if that interests you. Orn is easily Z tier. Pantheon has always been a fairly reliable jungler. He was even picked in pro play a few times due to his early kill pressure. He has point and click CC for ganks, and solid damage in case his laners can't follow up. He can also sustain camps with his E if needed, and he has global pressure once he hits level 6. Pantheon unfortunately does have a few sustain issues though, and his ganks before 6 aren't amazing. Pantheon is right at the top of A tier. Pike jungle is essentially two extremes, those being an extremely horrible clear, and extremely good ganks. 
Pike's Clear is laughably bad since his only damaging ability, Q, can only hit one target at a time. When it comes to ganks though, Pike can be deadly. His W allows him to rush into the lane invisible, and he can then set up his hook and stun. Take Hail of Blades and you'll have some good DPS for those ganks too. That's about the only value you offer to the team though, so Pike sits in B tier. Kiana Jungle is still alive and kicking, even if the play rate doesn't seem to agree. Her clear can still be achieved under 315, and her ganks are very strong with River Q plus mobility. For those who don't know, Kiana basically has point and click CC, since her Q is set to auto-target enemies that she uses E towards. It can still be flashed out of or dashed out of, but for the most part, using E into River Q is just a guaranteed route. Once you get ult, the ganks become even better, and objectives are easy too since the Baron and Dragon Walls are so big. Kiana can suffer a bit from sustain issues though, which keeps her in A tier. Quinn Jungle likes to play similar to Janna and Bard, except she can't roam around until level 6. Unlike Janna and Bard though, Quinn has a decent clear, at least after her abysmal 351st clear time. The clear is fine once you have all your abilities and can rotate vulnerable procs, but before that, it's a bit sad. Deal with the slow first clear and early invades to get level 6, then roam around trying to snowball the game. You can usually dodge out on invades with her W vision, and this skill is also useful for objective setups. Quinn is a B tier pick. Rakan plays like Blitzcrank. His Q doesn't actually heal off of camps, so you're left with just your passive sustain. The clear is painfully slow, but Rakan spends his time permaganking anyway. The range on the CC is good since you can E your ally from fog and then instantly get the W knockup. Ganks past level 6 can also be very powerful. Aside from that, you're not getting much use out of Rakan jungle that you wouldn't get from support, but the ganks and teamfighting are good enough to warrant a low B tier. Renata is another slow clearer with a 4 minute first clear. Her items also mean that her clear never gets faster. Her ganks are decent with slows and stuns, but the range is fairly short, which means they aren't amazing. Renata is also easily forced off of her jungle camps. The only slight additional value Renata brings from the jungle is that she's decent at objective setups with her ultimate. Renata is better left out of the jungle, and she gets D tier. Renekton checks off all the major jungle boxes. He has a clear right around 330, he's strong in 1v1s and skirmishes, and he's very stable and consistent. The main issue with Renekton jungle is that you're not able to use your early power as advantageously as you would like in top lane. Renekton is B tier jungler, but it's a bit of a question mark if you pick this. Even with perfect animation cancels, Riven just doesn't have the sustain to jungle properly. You would think she would, having a stun, shield, and knockup, but it just doesn't work. You're stuck with a full clear slower than Scuttle Spawn with maybe half of your health remaining. She also has a bit of difficulty getting meaningful ganks off. I would stay away from the pick, C tier. Rumble Jungle is still basically as good as it's always been. Riot tried to nerf it by changing how his danger bar worked and made it so you can't stack heat level 1. Except, you still can. E level 1 and the ability haste shard is enough to overheat on your first camp, so the clear is still just as fast as it used to be at around a 310. Rumble still has all the other uses he has, like strong skirmishing and 1v1s, good ganks, and a very long range ultimate that is great for objectives or picks. Rumble wasn't tagged as hard as people thought, and he remains an S tier jungler. Ryze jungle is pretty good. He has ranged point and click CC, although you need two clicks instead of one, and he has a good pace through the jungle at around a 331st clear and much faster subsequent clears. He also gets semi global pressure with ultimate, and he scales very well due to his fast clear and overload passive. Ryze can be invaded somewhat easily, but not bad enough to knock him down too far, landing him in A tier. Samira got tagged a bit by the season 14 jungle changes, since she got most of her sustain early from Omnivamp. She can still clear right around 330, and she still spikes super hard at level 6, but she's honestly now lacking in everything else. I've moved her down to B tier, but check out my Samira jungle guide if you want to give it a go anyway. Senna jungle is pretty bad. Her clear may be somewhat healthy, but it takes 4 minutes and you barely get any souls for it. She's squishy and can be easily invaded, and her scaling is basically non-existent in this role. The only redeeming quality at all is that her ult is global, which lets her scrape into C tier. Seraphine's clear is faster than one would expect. Due to her Q's enhanced damage on low health enemies, she can finish a full clear between 330 and 340. Her W also allows her to remain somewhat healthy, and her E and ult have long ranges for decent gank setup. She is prone to invades though, which places her in B tier. I had set jungle as Z tier on my season 13 tier list, and I also have a set jungle guide to go with it, but honestly, I was overshooting a bit. He functions perfectly well in jungle, but he's not that good. His clear is good, his ganks are good, scaling is good, invades and skirmishes are good, and objective setup is good. However, he has nothing that makes him stand out as a true meta-defining champ, or even a realistic meta champ at all for that matter. Set is smack in the middle of S tier. Everybody knows the Ripper Shen meme, which means everyone knows his ganks are pretty good. However, that video also gave people the impression that Shen has to gank and must have a slow clear. This is entirely false, as Shen can full clear with a sub 320. His Q does so much damage early that he can speedrun all the camps. 
In fact, Shen Q is so strong early that Shen can solo Cloud Drake at level 4 with no items other than Jungle Pet and still have 70% health after killing it. On top of all that, Shen is very good at 1v1s, meaning it's difficult to invade him and he has global pressure with his ultimate. Shen is an S tier jungler. Singed can be fairly efficient in the jungle. You can toggle your Q on and off to never run into mana issues, and the W and E are good enough to dodge out on invades. Those same abilities are also your main ganking tools, but the ganks are somewhat hard to pull off since the W pool is the only CC you have to try to run directly on top of them with E. His objective stake is also quite slow, and his overall sustain within the jungle is low early. Singed is playable but not amazing, putting him in B tier. Scion, similar to Nasus, stacks much faster through jungle than he does in lane. Unlike Nasus, Scion doesn't need the compromise's clear speed to do it, as Scion stacks his passive upon killing anything. The full clear is also very fast for a tank at 320 due to his high Q and W damage, and invading a Scion would be unwise due to the strength of Scion passive. Altogether, you end up with thousands of health higher than lane Scion would have, which is beneficial for both tank and assassin builds. The ganks can be underwhelming, but that's basically the only downside. Scion is S tier. Sivir's clear may be fast later, but it's not super great at first, clocking in at about 335. She has no built-in sustain in the jungle, so good luck surviving invades. Should you manage to survive early game though, you're rewarded with kind of okay scaling and decent objective setup with your ultimate. Sivir is gated in C tier. Smolder unfortunately stacks incredibly slowly in the jungle due to everything only granting one stack each. Even if you were to stack on everything, it would be significantly slower than lane Smolder, so there's really no point. This is made even more clear by the tragic 345 clear time. It's not good, just trust me. D tier. Sono's clear leaves her at full health at all times due to her W, but it's a slow 4 minute clear. Her ganks are mediocre at best, with using point and click slow with E passive before level 6, and needing to burn ult to get any meaningful CC across. Sona is relatively low resource though, so it's not unplayable. She gets C tier. Soraka is the slight upgrade to Sona. Her clear is a tad faster due to her Q damage, and while she has minimal ganking tools, she does come with a global ultimate to turn the tides of any lane. Higher C tier. Swain Jungle is the pick you play if you want to select an enemy and have them want to rip their hair out and uninstall on the spot. The way it works is that since your W has semi-global range, you can use it on the target every single time it's up. Doesn't matter if it lands. Imagine you're in lane trying to farm and trade and do everything a later needs to do, but now you add a dodging simulator once every 10 to 15 seconds. It's extremely mentally exhausting to deal with, which is great for Swain's team. You also get free stacks whenever it does manage to land, which is cool. Now to talk about Swain's actual jungling mechanics. His clear is fast due to his Q, and you can full clear before Scuttle spawns. Swain is a bit invade prone, but it's nothing too crazy. Ganks are decent with E, and skirmishes and objective situations once you have ult are very good. I give Swain an A for annoying. Silas Jungle is a pick a lot of people like to play, but I never really understood why. His ganks are strong and he snowballs hard for sure, but so do a lot of other champions. I never got the hype around Silas specifically. His clear is extremely unhealthy and not very fast, so you're kind of forced to take 3 camps and gank and hope to snowball. A bit too cheese for my liking, so I'm giving Silas B tier. Syndra's clear is around a 345, and she provides very little value through the jungle. Ganks consist of pressing Q to generate a ball, moving the ball with W, and then pushing the Q with E. You may have gotten the stun, but it took all of your cooldowns to do it. She also has a slow enough clear that scaling up is difficult, and she has no way to stop enemies from invading her camps. C tier. Tom Kent's jungle fell off hard when they mini reworked him to swap his W and R. He doesn't have Devour to clear camps faster, and his global pressure was replaced with a much shorter range knockup that can still create interesting gank angles, but is definitely no global ultimate type of useful. Instead, Kench is now left with the clear sitting around 345, still has great 1v1 in Skirmish, but is much less useful than pre-rework. Kench is B tier. Honestly, it's a bit questionable whether Talon should even be here. His play rate isn't super low or anything. I just decided to put him here anyway because I feel like people still don't view him primarily as a jungler. He was able to come back to the meta almost purely because of the Season 14 jungle pet. Originally, his W was able to two-shot raptors. Then, Riot nerfed it so that it couldn't. Now, with the jungle pet damage increase, his W can once again two-shot raptors, and his invade disruptor playstyle is back on the menu. Even if you don't do this, he still has a respectable 320 clear time and fantastic scaling for an assassin. Talon makes it to S tier. And here it is, the most broken jungler not only on this list, but arguably in the entire game. Once people figure out how he works, this pick will actually control the game. Tarek's clear is easily finished before Scuttlecrab, and he's one of the strongest dueling champions in the game due to his passive autos and healing. Invading Tarek is basically impossible. Tarek also functions as a way to instantly win all three lanes due to how he can heal his laners to full on his normal camp clear. His ganks are also pretty good with the E-stun, and it doesn't need to be you who hits it since you can tether your ally to do it for you. Tarek's scaling goes off the charts in jungle. He already scales mega hard as a support, but now when you have 3 or 4 completed items, Tarek actually just becomes a menace. 
My favorite way to play Taric is just to run from lane to lane topping everyone off constantly. Laners can play extremely aggressively when they have a Taric jungle on their team. Objective setups are also free because everyone is always full health regardless of which objective it is, and you have Taric gold if the enemy even thinks of trying to contest. Taric is at the top of Z tier. Thresh has a super slow 350 clear time, but his clear is relatively healthy due to all of his abilities being great for kiting. Those abilities will also save him from invades, but it won't stop the invader from taking all the camps anyway. Where Thresh does get a bit of an advantage is with ganks due to his hook, but that's all the value he provides. Thresh is C tier. Tristana jungle is an old fashion of mine. I played it a lot back in Season 9, and it still holds up decently today. She has good damage early with Hail of Blades, so fighting back against invades is an option. Her clear is right around a 330, so a good leash can get you to scuttle, and her clear becomes faster as the game goes on. Once you get quick blades, she cruises through objectives as well, and her scaling is decent in the jungle due to her fast clear. Her ganks can also be effective due to W slow and raw damage. All this being said though, it's not like she's amazing at any of those, so she rests at the top of B tier. Trindamir suffers the same dilemma as Fiora where he wants to side lane but can't exactly do so in the jungle. Side laning usually involves pushing away from the objective, but sacking every objective to push as a jungler isn't the best idea. Trindamir does have a bit more merit than Fiora though, as his full clear is sub 320, and his dueling is better. Still only B tier due to split push versus objective issues, but not bad at all. Twisted Fate has the best global ultimate in the game. Put this in jungle, and pair it with the ranged point and click gold card, and you've got yourself the best gank in the entire game. The only question would be how difficult it is to get level 6. Luckily, it's not hard at all. Your first clear is a bit slow at around a 340, but subsequent clears with components are very fast, especially with a few points in E. Twisted Fate is an easy S tier and is the pinnacle of global pressure. Twitch Jungle is the better and also original version of Pike and Akshan Jungle. Instead of clearing, Twitch likes to look for ganks with invisibility. He has the slowing puddle to help out too. Where Twitch differentiates himself from Akshan and Pike though is that he actually has a real jungle clear. His first clear is slow, around a 340, but clears after that are quite fast. If the cheese ganks don't work out, he still has other options to get back into the game. For this reason, Twitch is an A-tier jungler. Urgot got some nice jungle buffs a while back, and he can do crazy damage to camps with his W and passive. His first clear is a 310, and he wins many early fights in the jungle. Picking jungle Urgot is a bit like a ticking time bomb though, as you quickly become outscaled and useless if you fall behind. A fast clear and a press of early power can only get you so far, so Urgot is stuck at A tier. Varus has a decent clear for a marksman, right around a 330, and he has strong objective contests with WQ smite. His ganks are fairly good as well with E slow and R. However, Varus can easily be invaded before level 6, and he has nothing special going for him apart from the WQ smite combo. Varus is at the top of C tier. Thane has an insane clear for a marksman, and she can get a sub 310 if executed properly, although getting this time is one of the more mechanically challenging clears in the entire game. You'll realistically end up with around a 320. The clear only gets faster though, and her objective take is also quick due to her W. Vayne is held back by her subpar ganks and lack of true tools to win invades early though, which places her in B tier. Vygar's kit isn't great for jungling. He has the cage for his ganks, but is relatively low range just like the rest of his abilities. Stacking in the jungle is also extremely slow, as you reach nowhere near 10 stacks a minute off of camps. Your full clear gets you 18 stacks, and then your secondary clear gets you 12. So 30 stacks every 5 minutes roughly in the jungle. Putting Vygar in the jungle is just an active handicap to the champion, which leaves him in C tier. Vel'Koz isn't much better. His clear is around a 340, and he has some longer range than Vygar, but his ganks are terrible before level 6, and his ultimate is really only good for diving turrets out of range. Vel'Koz is also C tier. Vex is the best of the V Mage quadruple because she has semi-global ultimate, but she suffers the same issues as the others with an extremely bad clear speed and no real gank value before level 6. Her ganks are slightly better though due to the longest range fears, and obviously the global pressure puts her up a notch, getting her to B tier. Victor is the last of the V mages, and is also the worst. His clear is also super slow, and he gets the added bonus of his passive doing basically nothing to camps. So in 9 minutes, that would happen 4 times, so then you'd have 72 stacks, plus 2 buffs, 74 stacks. Okay, so you're stacking way less. If you like optimally clear, you're getting like 60% of the stacks. Would not recommend, and the only reason why Victor gets to touch C tier at all is because he at least has some okay CC in his kit. Vladimir has absolutely zero use in the jungle. His clear is super slow, the sustain is bad despite his Q having full healing against monsters, his ganks are bad since his W and E being slows are all he has, and he can't win any 1v1s early. To make matters worse, Vlad is a resource intensive late game hyper carry, but you won't be doing any of that in the jungle. Vlad is a D tier jungler. Zaya's clear is also on the faster side for Marksman, falling just under 330. This is because her E usually does reduce damage to minions, but retains full damage to monsters. Zaya can also use this enhanced E damage to secure objectives easily. 
This is where her benefits end, as her ganks are pretty bad since the only CC she has comes from using Q, then Auto, and then E, and hoping the enemy stayed in a straight line for her doing that. She also has struggles with invades, all of which keeps her in C tier. Xerath is another mage with a slow clear. However, like Vex, he has semi-global ultimate. However, unlike Vex, his CC is pretty bad. Altogether, this leaves Xerath in C tier. Yasuo is the better of the two Wind Brothers in the jungle. His passive shield helps him sustain through early clears, and his ultimate has much longer range. Paired with some good setup, his ganks are extremely deadly. Yasuo also has good scaling and dueling, both of which are solid to have in the jungle. I have a Yasuo jungle guide if this sounds interesting, but for this video, we'll leave him in A tier. Yone is still good, but not as good as Yasuo. His active shield on W is worse than Yasuo's passive, and you end up at lower health during his clear. Yone also has a tough time ganking, as his E provides less of ability than Yasuo's, and his ult is shorter range, although you can cast it without setup. You're gonna E in, you're not gonna have a Q, so you're gonna have to charge your Q, and then you're just gonna E back before you get- like. Yone also has some decent scaling, but his 1v1 is a bit worse than Yasuo's early, meaning Yone is more susceptible to invades. Yone is B tier. Yorick has some super funny jungle interactions. His ghouls are tanky enough that they can solo camps on their own, so Yorick can throw three ghouls on Gromp and then walk to red side and start clearing raptors while his ghouls finish the top side camps. He also has a similarly funny interaction with Baron, as his maiden can solo Baron alone as long as Yorick isn't tanking. It's also very easy to generate ghouls in the jungle, so invades against Yorick aren't a bright idea. The clear is easily finished before Scuttle spawns as well. Yorick ganks aren't too impressive though, as his W and E have quite short range, and his main strength of side laning is not as useful in jungle, so Yorick is high A tier. Yumi jungle sounds like a big meme, and it mostly is. Her clear is above 4 minutes, and she can be run over by just about anyone. Luckily, not all is lost for Yumi. Technically, all she has to do to be useful is hit level 6. Then, she can sit on the strongest carry and hopefully still remain useful as a second support. Yumi is a D tier for this reason. Zeri is one of the champions that people kept telling me was super cracked in the jungle. Her clear speed is quite decent, sitting around a 320, and her ganks are also solid as she can appear in lane with her W slow by EWing over a wall. However, she can find it difficult to fight back against invades, and she has no particularly useful tools for invades or early skirmishes. Her ganks also contain no hard CC, meaning they aren't always deadly. Zeri is no better than B tier. Ziggs is still a very solid jungler. Of the mage options, he's one of the best. His first clear is a bit on the slow side around a 335, but his DPS is high enough that subsequent clears are quick. Ganks on Ziggs are pretty good due to his long range W knockback and E slows, and his semi global pressure once he has ult is definitely real threat, especially since the damage on the R is high. Ziggs also has a lot of tools to fight back against invades, and a lot of zoning tools useful for objective setups. Ziggs is A tier. Zillion is another deceptively useful jungler. His first clear is outright terrible at a 350. However, Zillion can fight back against invades due to his E slow, guaranteeing double bombs, and his clear massively picks up steam once he has items. He also scales incredibly well with some gold, and he has all the usual annoying Zillion perks such as his slow scaling to 99%, and his ultimate being a teamfight game changer. If you've only ever picked a Zillion as a support, you'll very quickly find out how absurd his damage can be with a few AP items. Zillion is an A tier jungler. Zoe is another mage belonging to the forever slow jungle clear speed. She's got a clear around 340, and she's easily invaded. Her ganks on the other hand are fantastic. Since her E extends its range through walls, it's technically invisible pressure. Depending on how good you are at Zoe, some of the angles for her bubbles are extremely long and can surprise a lot of laners. If the bubble connects, her Q can come out of nowhere to chunk them for half their health. This gank pressure is enough to push Zoe up to a low B tier. At the time of writing this script, Zyra just got some jungle buffs confirmed that bring her clear all the way down to a sub 250, making her one of the fastest junglers in the game. She also can take objectives at one of the fastest paces as well, and her plants can even solo Baron at 20 minutes if you have ultimate. Zyra's only real downside is that she could be prone to invades early due to her squishiness and lack of mobility, but she can manage those situations okay, and it's not enough to take her out of S tier. And with that, the Season 14 version of the Kennet Jungle tier list is complete. It might not be perfect, but I feel much more confident with this one than I do the Season 13 one due to the extensive testing I did. If you're scratching your head at some of the higher rated picks, fear not, for I plan on streaming a lot of off beta jungle gameplay on Twitch in the next few weeks. I'm also likely streaming right now. Oh, I got jungle! <laughs> we know what that means. We have a spinner wheel with all of the A tier and above champions on it, so everything gets played eventually. If that sounds fun to you, go follow my Twitch channel at PsychopathicPoro. Rumble. If any of these picks seem extra interesting to you, let me know in the comments. If I see enough discussion on a specific champion, I'll be sure to make a guide for it in the future. I have a Discord server, a link to that will be in the description. I also have a Ko-fi page, and any tips are highly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Bye!